Welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa, where we discuss thought-provoking topics in an atmosphere of seriousness, decisiveness, and laughter. Here, we call a spade a spade. Today, I'm talking about the actions, or rather, the inaction of the government to mob action. In the same vein, Elijah is speaking on diversity and freedom in religion and in Nigeria. Ife Dolapo is looking at how running away, or Jakba, is now the new normal. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Stay with us. Mob action and government lack of action. In Nigeria, and by Nigerians, two persons were burned to death by a mob in Ijesha, Lagos State over an alleged theft of mobile phones. Deborah Samuel was gruesomely executed and her remains burned by fellow students over alleged blasphemy in Sokoto. A teenager was burned to death by a mob on accusations of stealing a motorcycle in Auchi Edo State. And David Imo was beaten up and set ablaze by commercial motorcyclists in Lekki Phase 1 over some yet-to-be-known crime. All these in May alone. Bear in mind that these are the ones that made the headlines. What of the ones that did not? This is our reality. Next door in Ghana, a Nigerian stole a mobile phone. And what did they do to him? He was made to clear the gutters in the community after which he was given water to have a bath and thereafter fed. This is a Nigerian in a foreign country. How is it that he was shown mercy when his own brothers would have put a tie around his neck and set him on fire? What has happened to us as a people where we have become so completely lacking in empathy and basic human decency? The Nigerian police and other law enforcement agencies have a duty of care to protect the lives and property of her citizens as well as defend the Constitution. However, it's beginning to look like we're in a free-for-all where everything goes and everyone can do as they please without fear of being held accountable. Now, what does the Constitution say? According to the 1999 amended Constitution, every person has a right to life and no one shall be deprived intentionally of his life save in the execution of a sentence by a court in respect of a criminal offence of which he has been found guilty in Nigeria. Every individual is entitled to respect for the dignity of his person and accordingly no person shall be subject to torture or to inhuman or degrading treatment. A person shall be entitled to a fair hearing within a reasonable time by a court or other tribunal established by law. A suspect shall be accorded humane treatment, having regard to his right to the dignity of his person and not be subjected to any form of torture, cruelty, inhuman or degrading treatment. A suspect shall be brought before the court as prescribed by this act or any other written law or otherwise released conditionally or unconditionally. So, the question that begs to be answered is, for all these crimes, who has been arrested? In the case of Deborah, for instance, two people have been arrested and for what crime, you may wonder, for conspiracy and inciting public disturbance rather than for murder. In Lagos, four people were arrested but have not been charged and the governor has banned commercial motorcycles in some areas of the state. So my question is, is this the totality of it? Before you, you forgot to add that the Nigerian that was uh, um, shown empathy or love in Ghana, he also found love. You know, after eating, there was a lady that fell in love with him, allegedly. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it online, actually. So, 
Uh, this is a very serious issue, actually. I remember the first day, the very first day of my life, I saw a human being being born today that was in nursery school. I remember, I can't forget, I was one of, uh, one of my guardians was taking me to school at that age, that early age, and I saw a corpse being born. I was like, what happened? He was trying to close my eye, don't look. I mean, being too inquisitive, mm. I saw it. I guess when I go home, I couldn't sleep, I was scared. And he told me, who asked you to look? And I was like, why would they do this to people? It's inhumane, it's barbaric. Can't take laws into your hands. Our country, we have to evolve. Imagine what happened to the Uniport Four students in 2012, the Alu Four. Mm. Those boys did not rob, according to what we found out. They said they only went, although what they did perhaps, they didn't do it properly. They said they wanted to go and collect their money from someone and the person collected money for them from a business and, and when they came to maybe harass him to collect back their money, business gone wrong, he shouted, thief, thief. And that's how people came and just gathered them without asking what happened, they killed them. Then I remember sometime between late 90s and early 2000, one of my cousins was telling me of one incident that happened at the area. I think that was a really that was some years back. That period, a woman, her son, according to her, stole from her and she started shouting, thief, thief. People came as I beating the child. Later, so they wanted to burn. He said, no, 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 my picking, no, no, burn him. Yeah. And there was another incident that happened during the lockdown. His young boy stole what Gary. Remember that story? And he was burnt. You didn't find out. In Lagos, yeah, that was during the lockdown. So mm. why? This is sheer wickedness to me. There is nothing like trying to prove a point. Oh, let's, let's kill them so that robbery will stop. Or this is wrong. Mm. Many of these people that were, that, that were burnt alive were actually innocent. Many of them were not guilty. I think um, we should look at the fundamentals of like... Um, when these mob killings happen, where does it happen? Mm -hmm. Who are the people that participate in it? We see that most people that participate in it are um, either illiterate or like extremely poor people or like people that have nothing much going on for them. And mostly people that maybe um, they, they are um, poor, no hope for them. The government isn't doing much for them. Society isn't doing much for them. And um, they probably go to bed hungry, they wake up, still no hope, begging for food and looking for meat. When you, when you get burnt, when they mob you, that's the worst thing that can happen. Not me. No, no. When they, <laughs> when they mob someone, okay. the mentality is, even though I go to bed hungry, I don't have hope, I don't have anything going on for my life, I'm still better than that person that was mobbed. Okay, so I, to be honest with you, I hear you, but I must do, I mean, just disagree with you. And the classic example is Deborah. They were not poor. They're students. They were not illiterate. They're students in a polytechnic that you would assume have a level of enlightenment. And for me, I think what I'm really trying to raise here is not even just the... So it's a mob. Um, there's a mob mentality. There's something that happens when a mob takes over that really nobody can control. Mm -hmm. are, what really bothers right me... In that sense. What bothers me... Sorry, Elijah, may I just finish? What really bothers me is the government's lack of inaction and the fact that all these things that we've talked about, they've mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. but no one has been convicted. Mm -hmm. No one has been brought to book. So look at Deborah, for instance. People have been arrested mm -hmm. for conspiracy and disturbing the public peace. Who's, who's been arrested for murder. the murder? The one in Lekki as well. Yes, dude, the government has banned the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. But... It will not solve the problem. It's not bringing the person back to life. Yeah. For you to, to um, I think, arrest someone for murder, you need to know what final hit killed the person. And you need to know the person that... Um, uh, made a final hit to kill the person because at the at, that means you're accusing about 50 people of murder, which is not possible. Well, some of them may be responsible so, for manslaughter. Even the so it's not murder, place. but the some of them may be responsible in the first place. I think I think the person that started in, in the first place, in the case of like um, the Lekki um, situation, the the Okara men that first came to start the opera, mm. are the ones that are being um, arrested, and if. I, I can't justify it. It is appalling. There is no it is, I, I, I I heard about the Lekki thing, and then I heard about the I'm a Muslim, and I heard that um, the Debra situation had something religious to do with religion and this thing. And then um, you see, we bring a quote in our Quran that says that we shouldn't take a life. Hmm. It is there. And then some people misinterpret it as we are fighting for God and this thing. And like, it's like, how many people, like even me, Dami Muslim, I'm scared of going to this side of the place where Deborah was, 
or schooling. I won't mention the state. I'm, I'm scared of going there because they are extremists. They won't, if I'm telling them Islam is my religion, I understand you and they say, they won't, they won't care into what I'm trying to say because they will think like maybe I'm whitewashed or I'm westernized and they say, they are extremists. You can't really make sense with a stupid person. Okay, the thing is, from what you said, it's not, I, I would disagree with you with regard to what you said initially about the persons that are involved in mob action. I yeah. usually illiterate, not so much for them. It's not mm. actually true. It's mob mentality. Mob mentality. When mm. I was in secondary school, I remember we were having a conversation with our English teacher and he said something that that was the day he was driving through the popular Vooks at because that period, almost every weekday when we come back from school, we're going towards Vooks, you must see a dead body at that, along that Vooks wedding. Yeah, they've killed somebody. They've burnt someone because there's all this rubbish there. Now, guess what? He said there was someone that was alleged of stealing. Mm. And before you know, you got that started beating him. The next thing, the woman parked her vehicle, came down from her vehicle, said, I have fuel him, let's burn him. Oh my now, that woman, according to he him, did not know what was happening. Not a woman. She's not. She's and she not had no woman. idea what it's was happening. It's just more mentality, like yes. you said. So, the government has to be decisive. Number one, nobody has the right to take laws. Absolutely. Into their yeah. If Absolutely. you feel somebody do something wrong, hand over the person to the police. Let mm -hmm. the police do their job. And, and they should also pass a bill that anybody involved in mob action, if they can arrest the person, if they're involved one way or remotely or directly, the person should spend some time in jail because it's wrong. Yeah. I think our problem is not, the, is not that there are no laws. It's just that they are not being enforced. So pass a bill all you can. What are the existing laws? Nobody is enforcing it. And what makes me really sad is the fact that our law enforcement agencies appear to be completely impotent Mm -hmm. and unable mm -hmm. to do anything about it. I mean, in Lekki, you heard that, oh, the police came and the mob overpowered the police. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that is just so sad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, up next is Elijah. Stay with us.